there is a characterization of harmonic functions through Poisson integral is the tool to help us get that proof. So a continuous function can be identified to be a harmonic function if it satisfies the mean value property. Let H be a continuous function on a domain. then H is harmonic on D if and only if H has the mean value property. We have already seen that harmonic functions satisfy mean value property. And uh, now it is something that harmonic functions are the only functions and they satisfy the mean, not only functions, but uh, any function which satisfies the uh, mean value property is a harmonic function. So uh, we don't need to do it's uh, one part where we have to prove that harmonic function satisfy mean value property. We will only prove that if we have a continuous function which satisfies mean value property, then such a function is a harmonic function. And uh, the proof will use again the Poisson integral. Uh, let me first uh, set a notation. Uh, what notation I'm going to use? Uh, let let H be a continuous function. Then uh, H till the H till the P of H, E notation, how I'm going to set for it, P of H. I hope it will work, but there is no need to get. And P of H is nothing, but it is, uh, it is the, <laughs> it be the <coughs> Poisson integral of H on domain. D, uh, not only on domain D, but on on some disk, whatever disk it is. U. Okay, let's give the fix this notation for the Poisson integral. And uh, now uh, we suppose that H is a continuous function and H has the mean value property. And uh, we uh, have this thing to show that uh, H is a harmonic function. And uh, to show that it's a harmonic function, we show that it is harmonic in every disk that is contained in D. Mm. Uh, then it will, since uh, D is made up of disks, D is an open set, it's a domain, and you know that disks form the base for the topology, eh, the usual topology and complex plane, and any open set is made up of uh, such disks. So it is, uh, it is, Sufficient to show that H being harmonic on U is harmonic on any disk that is contained in domain D. Let us choose uh, U be an arbitrary disk uh, such that not only U but U along with its closure lies in domain D. And uh, now we have proved that whenever we have a continuous function on a boundary of any disk, then the Poisson integral of that continuous function is a harmonic function inside that uh, disk. So uh, we have H is continuous, 
since h is continuous on whole of the disk h is continuous on whole of the disk because it is continuous on whole of domain two, so it is continuous on uh, this closure of this disk u hence i will write it in this way there is a harmonic function function and the harmonic function that i'm talking about is nothing but the Poisson integral of this function h on u such that on the boundary of this disk on the boundary of this disk u uh, this harmonic function extends to be a continuous and is same as the function h this is the uh, thing that we have proved and this is also known as a Dirichlet problem what is a Dirichlet problem is uh, that given a form given a continuous function on the boundary of some disk the problem is to uh, find a harmonic function which is an extension of this function to the inside of that circle and uh, such that that boundary of the uh, that harmonic function is uh, on the boundary the harmonic function extends to be equal to the given function so uh, this is what we have already done now mm, we see that we see that mm, h tilde minus h satisfies the mean value property uh, on u now why it satisfies the mean value property by hypothesis h satisfies mean value property and uh, h tilde which is a poisson integral of u is a harmonic function and harmonic functions do satisfy the poisson, uh, mean value property and so uh, their difference will also satisfy the mean value property why because mm, mm, you have this function h tilde of at any let, let's take to be any center if if you suppose uh, that u is a disk with center z naught and some radius epsilon then what mean value property means that uh, h tilde z minus h of z h satisfies h tilde satisfies the mean value property because its harmonic function means that the value at the center of the disk is the average of h tilde on the boundary and uh, let that boundary be r e i theta into d theta upon 2 pi minus h uh, by hypothesis h also satisfies the mean value property so value at the center at z naught has to be average of the values of the function on the boundary of the circle this circ disk whatever r you take uh, so that this r is less than epsilon and now you see that this integral being a linear function i can write it to be equal to 0 to 2 pi uh, h tilde r e i theta minus h of r e i theta d theta or 2 pi and you see now uh, what is this thing this thing is the average of this function h tilde minus h on this circle of radius r and this this is equal to value of the function h tilde minus h at z naught so we see that uh, if h and if two functions that it has the mean value property they are different and likewise their sum will also have the mean value property so now what what have what what information do we have till now uh, h satisfies mean value property h tilde is a harmonic function which is an extension of h to uh, inside the boundary of this inside the disk uh, u and their difference uh, satisfies mean value property and also also note down that uh, h tilde and h are same on the boundary also note that h tilde 
uh, is equal to h on the boundary of this q so that is to say that their difference is zero on the boundary of u okay the, uh, this is zero on the boundary of u now now i'm going to get this maximum principle but uh, we have done maximum principle for harmonic function maximum principle for analytic functions but uh, if you look at the proof of a harmonic for proof of maximum principle strict maximum principle for harmonic functions the only thing that we have used in the proof of the harmonic function maximum principle for harmonic function is the mean value property of that harmonic function so that maximum principle can be stated for mean value for those functions which satisfy the mean value property that means any function which has the mean value property has the maximum principle it satisfies the maximum principle so directly uh, we don't need separate proof if you if you go and revisit that proof you don't uh, you don't you you do not use even at a once the property of a function being harmonic like uh, its partial derivatives are continuous or it satisfies laplace equation these two things are used nowhere in that proof the only thing that is used in that proof is the, that this function satisfies mean value property and the same proof works for the maximum principle for mean value property so that now we are convinced that uh, harmon function satisfying mean value properties do satisfy the maximum principle so now i can apply on the maximum principle and what i get what maximum principle says uh, it says that the it takes its maximum or minimum always on the boundary but uh, you see we have a function which is uh, zero on the whole of the boundary so maximum principle it follows that it is zero everywhere inside the disk by maximum principle uh, for the functions satisfying mean value property mean value property we see we get that h tilde is x minus h z is equal to zero for all z inside the boundary inside the boundary means in, in the disk u so that is to say that h of z is equal to h tilde at z for all z in unit disk u you have this property now you see that this h tilde uh, this being poisson integral of h is harmonic in u and this is same as the h in u so it follows that h is harmonic in u h is harmonic in u and u was an arbitrary disk in t let me write this since u is arbitrary disk in t it follows that it is harmonic h is harmonic in any disk that is contained inside uh, d along with its closure so it uh, it implies that h is harmonic h is harmonic in whole of domain d and this is what we require to prove is it okay Do you have any questions? Okay. So uh, it's converse part. We have already done it. We have already proved that harmonic function satisfied. So I don't write. I don't need to write it separate proof. So uh, we have to imitate some applications of this theorem, uh, which I'm going to state as corollaries. Corollary one, and in very brief, corollary one uh, states that limit of a uniformly uniformly convergent 
sequence of harmonic functions functions is a harmonic function see we had seen we have seen that uh, uh, uniform limit are in more uh, you know, but weaker version that a local uniform limit of a analytic function is a analytic function and same thing holds for harmonic functions that if a sequence of harmonic functions converges uniformly to another function u then that function u is also a harmonic function another thing that uh, uh, this theorem uh, you you might observe is that uh, by definition uh, of harmonic functions we had uh, several things uh, to say about harmonic function as a part of definition so the first thing is that h uh, the, if h is a harmonic function it must be continuous it must have second order continuous partial derivatives and then it must satisfy laplace equation but this theorem now makes a uh, harmonic functions very easy to handle it only states one thing it states that the function is harmonic if it satisfies mean value property and mean value property requires only integral thing it requires no differentiation or anything whereas definition of harmonic functions involves the derivative and mean value property involves only integrals and sometimes integrals are much easier to handle than the differentiation and to check whether it has second order partial derivatives continuous or not so it, it's a kind of uh, theorem what morera theorem is for analytic functions this theorem is for uh, equivalently we can say that this is a kind of theorem for harmonic functions which involves only continuity and no differentiation or other part but it establishes that the function is harmonic so saying this let's come back to this corollary and uh, let's work out its proof and suppose we have a sequence uh, suppose uh, we have a sequence um, it's a sequence of uh, harmonic functions functions such that hn converges to another function h uniformly and let's take uh, domain t now we know that uh, uniform limit of continuous functions is continuous and since harmonic functions are continuous uh, clearly h is also continuous h is continuous h is a continuous function now <clears throat> our claim is to establish that h is harmonic and to show that h is harmonic function i have to apply the theorem that we just proved that h satisfies the mean value property and this is what i am going to show and to show that it satisfies the mean value property let's choose an arbitrary point z not in d and uh, let's since d being an open set uh, we will be definitely able to get a disk and let this be a disk along with its closure uh, about center uh, being z not in domain d this is always possible since d is a open set okay this will be a disk contained in d now each hn is a harmonic function and so each hn satisfies the mean value property so uh, each hn has a mean value property has a mean value property so that means h n at z naught is equal to one upon two pi i'm taking it outside right now zero to two pi h n of z naught plus r e i theta d theta 
for any r less than epsilon now so let's take the limit to both let's apply the limit to both sides and if I, if I apply limit n tends to infinity hn of z naught it has to be equal to limit n tends to infinity let's adjust by 2 pi inside of this integral it has to be limit 0 to 2 infinity mm. hn of z naught plus rei theta t theta upon 2 pi now the permission we need a permission to take this limit inside of this integral and this permission is available with us why it is available with us all since uh, uh, the convergence is uniform and in case of uniform convergence integral and limit can be interchanged and because of uh, since hn converges to h uniformly uh, so what we have we have that this limit and tending to infinity 0 to 2 pi can be taken inside the integral so that we have this equality integral 0 to 2 pi limit and tending to infinity hn of z naught plus rei theta d theta upon 2 pi okay we have this thing now but uh, the limit of hn is the h itself so it comes out to be integral 0 to 2 pi it has to be h of z naught plus r e i theta d theta upon 2 pi so what is left hand side now left hand side uh, is uh, this thing and but it has to be h of z naught so what you uh, you end up with this equation right now and what is this equation is this equation says that the value of h at z naught is equal to the average of the values of h on a circle of radius r with center z and r can be anything which is can be any number lying between zero and epsilon and so what it implies it implies that h has the mean value property mean value property uh, on this particular disk so in this way uh, about each point in domain d we get a disk a certain disk which is contained inside domain d and uh, then h will satisfy the mean value property on each of such disk and uh, it satisfies mean value property in, on each such disk implies that h or i the better to conclude in this way since z not in d was arbitrary arbitrary it follows that h has mean value property on whole of the domain d h has mean value property on whole of domain d and hence h is harmonic hence h is harmonic is it okay is it clear we we do not have to show that h has continuous partial derivatives or h satisfies laplace equation all that stuff the only thing to you we establish here that h satisfies the mean value property and that is sufficient to show that uh, to conclude that h is a harmonic is it okay is it clear yes, so okay Let's look at the another corollary uh, that is again done with the help of the theorem, which characterizes the harmonic functions. This is corollary two. Uh, what it says that uh, let g t z is a function of t and z, where z is a complex variable and t is a real variable, be a continuous function. continuous function defined for this interval a of t and z uh, 
in T where T is a domain. Domain that is, I must say that uh, domain of definition of this G is A B cross this so D. Now further let us assume that suppose that for each fixed t g t z is harmonic its harmonic function of z then the function capital G as a function of Z defined by this equation integral from A to B real integral G of T Z DT where Z in domain D is also harmonic. It's also harmonic. Let's look at the proof again. We will to show that this capital G is harmonic. We will show that this capital G satisfies the mean value property so uh, uh, proceeding um, similarly if we choose a point in domain d and uh, being open we can choose a certain disk along with its closure in domain d at z with center z naught and uh, by hypothesis for each fixed value of t uh, for fixed T in this interval a b we know that g t z is harmonic so it satisfies mean value property so it satisfies mean value property means that for a fixed t the value of g t at z that has to be the mean value or the average of this function T is a fixed quantity. It has to be Z naught plus R E I theta D theta upon 2 pi for any value of 0 or less than epsilon. Now uh, let's try, let's integrate this equation, this uh, function of T right now. Let's try to integrate it uh, over the interval AB. Uh, what we get, uh, we have this thing that integral a to b g t at z naught d t is equal to integral a to b uh, now on left hand side i'm going to have double integrals 0 to 2 p g of t z naught plus r e i theta d theta upon 2 pi into d t now on the left hand side we have double integrals are iterated integrals are also these known as iterated integrals and uh, from major theory semester two you might remember a theorem which is known as Fubini's theorem so by Fubini's theorem by Fubini's theorem uh, what you can do uh, Fubini's theorem is well applicable here because uh, these are the majors that we are dealing with are the big majors and the space is uh, C or uh, this interval AB whatsoever this this is a product space and this is a uh, sigma finite space both these spaces are sigma finite and we have continuous functions because we, we only require measurable functions or integrable functions our sigma finite spaces then the order of integration can be changed this is what is the uh, is the context of uh, Fubini's theorem so here uh, we have all these properties to change the order of integration through Fubini's theorem and uh, when I change the order of integration I can write it to be 0 to 2 pi first and I can write integral a to b g t z naught plus R e i theta and d t and I can take d theta upon 2 pi outside and on left hand side I have this quantity and uh, a this is a to b 
G T at Z naught, but by definition, this is value of capital G at Z naught. So the value of capital G at Z naught is equal to this double integral kind of this thing. And let's try to see what this thing is. This is G at Z naught, and this is integral zero to two pi. And this is integral Z A to B, G of T, Z naught plus Rei theta. This is T T, D of T into D theta on two pi. So what is this thing inside the brackets? Uh, inside the brackets, this is value of G at Z naught plus Rei theta. And uh, then we have integral of this function zero to two pi. And this is D theta upon two pi. So you end up at this equation uh, whose interpretation is that the value of capital G at Z naught is equal to the average of the value of G on the circle of radius R at center Z naught. And this R can be any number lying between zero and epsilon. And this shows that G has the mean value property. This shows since Z0 was an arbitrary point in D, so it follows that this happens for every point in domain D. It shows that G has the mean value property. on whole of domain T, and hence, again, by the theorem, it follows that G is harmonic. And is it okay? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, then. Any question, any query? So, no questions, no 